Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the GameSpot Studios. I'm your host, Chris Waters, and joining me here, Matt Higby, Creative Director on Planet Side 2. Matt, welcome to GameSpot. We're super psyched to have you here. Thanks for having us. And Planet Side 2, you guys launched last week. Mm -hmm. Boom, in full effect. You got continents up, you got thousands and thousands of players in there. How's mm -hmm. it going? Uh, it's going amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's beyond our wildest expectations. That is great to hear. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be playing some Planet Side 2 for the next hour. We are on GameSpot.com, of course, so join us in the comments there. Also, we're on twitch.tv slash GameSpot, where there's a chat going, so get in there. Ask us some questions. I got the man right here. He's going to tell you all you want to know about Planet Side 2, and first we're going to jump around and just sort of get a get an overview for those of you who maybe aren't like up on Planet Side 2, because we pity you and want you to be up with us on this as well. So, uh, where are we at here, Matt? Uh, right now, I am on Esimir, and I'm actually flying around using a GM command that lets me sort of observe the battlefield from up above. So we've got kind of a relatively small fight happening at this way station, which is one of the outposts right next to the NC uh, warp gate over here. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a staging area where this particular empire, which is also my particular empire... Oh, he's got is, the tags and everything. got the dog tags, is, uh, is pushing out and fighting against some other guys. It looks like they're fighting against the VS right now. I can tell by the laser beams. Um, so, yeah, we're just having a look. So we've got a little bit, some vehicle bombardment happening from the outside, but of course infantry moving in to, to get into those structures there. Yeah. Three factions all across, how, you guys have three continents now? We have three continents, yeah. And this is one of them, Esamir, the sort of snowy uh, Arctic type continent. Yeah, this is our most desolate continent. Um, you can see that it kind of has uh, really long view distances and the ability for you to see from base to base. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a, mostly a ground vehicle oriented map, so... Uh, each one of our continents kind of allows for different types of gameplay and emphasizes different types of gameplay. And uh, So yeah. here we're at ground vehicles. So let's take a look at some of these Vanu ground vehicles here that are sort of, I guess, bombarding from the hillside, but now also moving into... Uh, these valleys can like quickly turn into a kill zone when you've got one of these vehicle-on-vehicle -vehicle matches going on. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And we can see here they're sort of bombarding the NC troops, which are uh, posted up on this, on this little rock right here, kind of trying to get as much cover as they can. Uh, from these dudes who are coming in from the other side. So, so yeah, there's a MC lot of mag riders. There, if you're MC back there, you are clearly, like, getting some vehicle bombardment. Like, what's your recourse? What is, what's your plan if you're back there to, to change the tide of battle? Uh, I would go over here to the warp gate, get a Liberator, which is a heavy uh, aircraft. It's a bomber. And I would come here and lay waste to all these... And just drop them down because they're just sitting right there. Mm -hmm. And if you've tried any bombing in Planet Side 2, I mean, in any game, really, a, a target that's just sitting there is like so juicy and you just float right over and BAM! Yeah, absolutely. This is a, this is a, a honey pot, you would call this. <laughs> You're flying over the top of this and you can see here that we have some Reavers, which is the uh, new conglomerate uh, light strike fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that they're kind of flying around and trying to get something done with their rocket pods, but really what you need is one of these guys. And unfortunately this belongs to the wrong faction. This is a Vanu Sovereignty Liberator. Uh -oh. But uh, these can be outfitted with some pretty heavy weaponry on the bottom that is really, really good at anti-ground armor. And it, worth noting too that that isn't a one-man vehicle. Mm -mm. Like you need for that to be effective, you need someone in the bomber seat. And a lot of these vehicles here are designed to carry multiple people to be effective. Especially that uh, the truck, the transport truck you were just focused on there. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of its roles. Is uh, it's good for bringing an entire squad of people, which in Planet Side Two is is a uh, twelve-man group. Uh, taking an entire squad to the front line really quickly and safely. That's sort of what it's for. But it can also deploy, and what they're actually using it for back here right now, where'd it go, is a, uh, a spawn point. So we can see it's deployed, it has these sort of uh, uh, legs that have extended out, mm -hmm. and now Vanu troops can respawn back at this, switch their equipment out. So this would actually be the target for the Liberators. Take this out first, and then take out this armor. Because that'll cut the flow of troops to that area. And of course in Planicide 2, with this, uh, you guys can see, there's like, it's just so much area to cover. Troops spawning and being able to get to the front is a huge, you know, tactical consideration. Yeah, logistics are really important in this game. So, I mean, I can just quickly go into the map here and I can show you. We're looking at this area right here. We can see all these little blue dots are friendly players, which means mm -hmm. they're NC players that are sort of swarming around here trying to figure out what they're going to do about the VS players, which are hanging out over here. Um, this is one capture point on this map. So if we come and we own this, this point, which we do right now, luckily, um, we're going to earn resources from it. But it's just one point. And kind of the goal is to push out from our warp gate, which is right here, and take over as much as we can. Um, on this particular map, a tech plant is a really juicy target because there's only one of them on, on this map, and you need to be connected to this to be able to spawn heavy tanks. 
So mm -hmm. uh, as we push out and progress across here, um, that's going to be the target. Right now, we can see that the Vanu Sovereignty, the Purple Empire, has taken over most of this map. It's pretty well dominating, despite uh, the world population saying there's not quite as many of them as there are. Well, oh, let's Esimir. look at let's look at Esimir ah, specifically, okay. and this is going to be a much different story, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, but it's it actually is. relatively <laughs> balanced between the empires that are actually fighting here right now. That's true. Um, the Terran Republic don't have much of a presence here, which just means that they're off somewhere else, causing trouble instead. So yeah, I mean, logistics are super important. Not only do you need to uh, move out, capture these different bases, but being able to bring something like a, a Sunder and deploy it to be able to respawn is critical for you to be able to be successful within the game. Mm -hmm. Now I've got some folks uh, curious about their own questions, some folks who've clearly uh, played and enjoyed a lot of Planetside. One specific one is asking about the old underslung mini chain gun. <laughs> uh, apparently a weapon that uh, that that player really enjoyed. Yeah, uh, we don't have an underslung uh, underslung one anymore. One that's kind of held low like this. Mm -hmm. um, ours is kind of held a little bit higher. And the main reason for that is in a game like this that's so based on cover, finding a cover spot and being able to shoot on it. If you're holding a weapon down here, it's just going to hit the the, the like. Uh, it's going to hit the, it? low the waist cover, height cover. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and then it, your torso is just going to be sticking up above it, getting mm -hmm. ready to get uh, shot. Exactly, yeah. And it was kind of unintuitive when we had that. Uh, it was something that people complained a lot about, the weapon actually hitting these, these cover pieces all over the place. So um, we removed it, and we still have the mini chain gun in the game. It's just now held up here a little bit more instead of underslung down here. It looks a little bit different, but it's still pretty cool, I think. There you go, Tixie Lex. Get your, uh, I mean... Apparently, this, this player never likes to take cover, so what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> That's typical for somebody rocking a mini chain gun. It's all offense and no defense, right? You just charge right in. <laughs> all right, now we've got uh, Blue Pyros on Twitch, apparently a fan of you guys and following you on Twitter, wondering about the vehicle Smedley tweeted about earlier. Uh, you know, you I've, know been, I've that? been here the whole time. Oh. I do kind of know a, a thing or two about them, and all I can really say is that I would keep uh, Adam Clegg our famous unable to fly a vehicle properly without crashing it designer as far away from that particular vehicle as possible. <laughs> there you go. Cryptic hints yeah. from Higby. <laughs> now, a couple of these dudes are glowing green. Like, is this, in terms of the soldier loadouts we can see here, what? Uh, there's a, a, bu a bunch of different classes taking the field. Yeah. Yeah. So, that guy who was glowing green just now, um, he is a Vanu Sovereignty heavy assault. Mm -hmm. So one of the Vanu Sovereignty's uh, special, or one of the Heavy Assault special abilities is he can activate a shield which mitigates some damage that's incoming. Mm -hmm. And he's supposed to be sort of an anti-vehicle guy, so the idea is if you hit that shield, you might be able to take a shot from a vehicle while you get your rocket launcher out and, and, and take a shot at him. But in practice, people use it a lot when they're just running from cover point to cover point, too. That guy was uh, trying to fight against... I don't know, what would you call this? 10 guys, 15 guys down here? A yeah, couple vehicles? A whole little squad moving out there. Yeah, exactly. And then some. So using that shield was a pretty intelligent move for him right here. So it looks like the the new conglomerate has managed to push out a little bit. They managed to cross uh, the street. They crossed the road, yeah. you know? But it's you do get in these battles that are just where you really feel like this is the front line that I'm on right now, and I'm pushing it forward, I'm pushing it back. Um, and so, you know, we see snipers here, we see people sort of chancing the, the in-between area, but, um, oh, and I guess some, some orbital bombardment there. The, of course, the battle rages on the ground and in the sky. That's right, yeah. It's a truly combined arms game. Basically, 24-7 within this game, you're going to be uh, thinking about aircraft and ground vehicles and infantry. Mm -hmm. And all of them have a really unique and important role to play. Um, and the places where they intersect uh, kind of creates one of the coolest and most interesting and, uh, of course, one of the most challenging to balance areas of the entire game. Yeah, no uh, doubt. But, yeah, it, it really makes this game shine, the fact that we do have this amazing infantry gameplay, but it's backed up by really, really exciting vehicle gameplay and aircraft. Uh, it really makes the world feel larger than um, your standard FPS Ooh, game. Nice little bombing run there. Yeah. Put the hurt on that thing, but there's you've got the... Are they engineers that do the repairing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can actually see here we this little... Uh, light that's flashing on this uh, vehicle every once in a while is an engineer repairing it. We can see the decals down here from the explosions that have been hitting here. Yeah, it looks, and the vehicle itself is looking a little worse for wear, but maybe it's repairing pretty quickly. Yeah, he's, no, I think no. he's pretty repaired up now. Smoking a little bit. Uh, yeah, so you talk, when you talk about, um, you know, infantry in these combats, uh, you can take a look at the map for yourself and sort of see where the front line is, um, but you also have communication within 
uh, squads and within factions to some degree. How does how does that sort of work? If you know, is there a commander that can come down the pipe and say? We need more men down at the tech base, you know, that kind of structure. There's some tools like that, and that's something that uh, we're planning on, on putting a large emphasis on in the next year, is adding more tools to allow for better communication and better coordination. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there are tools that you can get right now to, for instance, uh, unlock a commander channel where all the other people who are in there are going to be squad leaders that are actively playing right now. And you can, if you have access to that channel, you can help coordinate with those the other squad leaders and say, hey, I'm taking my squad over to this location. Okay, I'm bringing my squad over here. Okay. But you can also just send orders out, which broadcast to the entire server. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get the new conglomerate to come and uh, uh, go after this particular amp station that we're looking at, then you can do slash orders and, uh, and tell them so. And then everybody who is of your empire on that zone gonna get that message will see that message. Yeah, over there. and you know it, it, it can be a little bit spammy sometimes, and people are just talking about what they saw on the voice last night sure. through that that channel. But we have a, a limiter, so you can't uh, you can use it once every five minutes. It's behind a cert cost, so someone has to spend a pretty significant amount of, of time in game to unlock that ability. Mm -hmm. And it's also just text, so if somebody's being spammy on there once every five minutes, you can just slash ignore them, and then you know they have to see and that there person you go. again. It's taken care of now. NG continuing to push over this ridge and oh, yeah. onto that larger base uh, on the horizon. As it moves over there, uh, you mentioned certs, and this is sort of the, you know, the, the growth, the, the way you get your character stronger, get access to more, well, not stronger per se, but get access to more vehicles, more weapons, more customization options. Exactly. Let's talk a little bit about that system for folks, uh, you know, because that's one of the things that can really grab a player and keep them invested in the game is the way that they can get, gain access to more stuff. Yeah, I mean, beyond just gaining access to more stuff, what it really lets you do is just customize your own particular play style. Mm -hmm. If you're a guy who really loves uh, close quarters combat, that's what you're. That, that, that's what really gets you excited. Then you can get weapons that are better at close quarters combat than the default. You can spec your guy out so that you have shields or armor attachments that make you better in close quarters combat. Mm -hmm. Really, you can define your own role in uh, in a very broad way in Planet Side Two. Uh, which is important because there's so many important things for you to be doing on the battlefield and so many players that you're going to be playing with that you can have each one of those guys specializing in different stuff and if you decide you really want to put emphasis today on air power. Uh, we need to have more aircraft in here to take out some of this armor. Mm -hmm. Well, you can have a whole bunch of people who've spent hundreds of hours unlocking stuff to make their aircraft better and those guys can actually really wield those in real world situations. Now, they're not going to be necessarily stronger because somebody who has a good anti-air weapon is going to be able to, uh, to take them out or uh, somebody who sees that guy when he's running around on the ground, you know, he's not gonna be as good because he spent all his time on uh, unlocking stuff for his aircraft. Sure. But yeah, it's really about versatility and how many different uh, how many different methods of playing the game you can unlock. It's never really about gaining more power. As a new player, you're gonna be completely able to compete with everybody who's in the game. Even this giant guy with two arm guns for arms? So this is a max suit, <laughs> um, and anybody who jumps in at the very first second they're playing the game can switch into this max suit. It's not like there's anything you really have to do to unlock it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, any other class in the game can actually compete against this max suit. It's just a matter of using your own abilities correctly against this guy's ability. You might not want to run right up into his face and, and get into a uh, get into a punching match with him when you're playing as a sniper. No, not so much. Yeah, but <laughs> from from way out there, from a little bit further uh, away, you know, you're going to have an advantage against him. All right, I'm going to check into the uh, chat and comments here too. Uh, I'm going to play a bit. Play a bit. Yeah. Oh, all right. Get in get there. Get myself and, killed here and blast some Oof. dudes. Look at me. I've exited my observer mode. Is there any way to purchase Planet Side Two merchandise? Yeah, I mean, you got the dog tags. Yeah. Um, right now, I don't think that there is a way to purchase any merchandise. We have some different t-shirts and stuff that we use as giveaways, but we don't have a store set up for them at all. all right. uh, if that's something that people are really stoked about, really interested in, I'm sure uh, it, something can be done. With. Will there ever be a city continent? We've talked a bunch about doing more urban style um, fighting. Uh, making, making an entire continent, making a city an entire continent uh, is, is tough. There's a lot of objects that you would need to create. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is something that we've chatted a bit about, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if we had more city-related. Oh, got you. Ooh, I'm close and personal with the max, but you got him. Nice. So play this game a little bit. <laughs> uh... I've seen it once or twice. <laughs> All right, let's see. We've got people talking about the max suit uh, in terms of you know respawn, like regenerating energy and going into terminals, and so it, you have these ways to balance different classes. You know, the max suit obviously packs a ton of firepower, but can't be healed by a medic. 
Right, yeah, you need an engineer to heal him. Mm -hmm. All right, question uh, about from Strategos on GameSpot. I'm wondering about earning XP for defending. Uh, we, you know, we've seen some XP pop up for killing. Uh, you've, you've taken some dudes out. But in terms of other objectives, like capturing, defending, supporting teammates, you know, how, how does that sort of work, XP-wise? Uh, well, you can actually earn, um, you can earn XP, bonus XP when you're defending. Mm -hmm. So attackers actually get a big pile of additional XP when they, uh, when they successfully attack an area and win. Uh, but defenders earn bonus experience for every action they take while defending. Mm -hmm. So each kill you get, you get some bonus experience for. Each time you revive somebody, you get some bonus experience for. It's kind of a, a dueling uh, motivation that we have set up. We want defenders to stick it out and play even when they think they might lose the base and not just be there purely because they're going to get a big because reward at the end. That bonus. Yeah. yeah, so the attackers stay until the end. They're not going to just bust out if the defense is really strong. And the defenders stay because they're still earning a bonus the entire time. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, a lot of people aren't necessarily noticing that they're gaining the bonus experience there because it's not quite as flashy and in your face as the big plus a thousand experience when the base gets captured. Sure, sure. And that's something that we definitely need to do something about. But uh, the game itself does give you bonuses for uh, for defending and doing defensive actions. Okie doke. Uh, here in the GameSpot comments, folks, well, Kevin Van Ort uh, chiming in Vanu for life. Boo! <laughs> Apparently, he's a Vanu guy, so it's a good thing he's not in the room here. Uh, Death Pong wondering about engineers having alternate turrets. Now, we spotted a few of them earlier during the more open field combat. Uh, engineers can place a turret with a with a shield in front of it uh, that only they can use. Yes. Um, wondering if there are other potential for other types of turrets, I guess. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we will add more turrets in the future. I mean, we'll have uh, anti-vehicle and even anti-air turrets. Uh, it's something that we've actually worked on already. It's just not in the game quite yet. Looks like in the Twitch chat we've got Vanu Sovereignty and New Conglomerate being the, the two most vocal members. What do you guys think? Sign off in there, or sound off rather. Any any Terran Republic folks in there? I wonder. Nah, they're too busy. Shining their boots. <laughs> we've actually, it's been, it's been really cool seeing the way that the, uh, the factions split out and how even the factions are. Um, it's, it's kind of unbelievable actually. We end up having 32%, 33%, 34%, or percentages roughly like that in terms of characters wow. that are getting created on new servers, uh, which is great. I mean, that's exactly what you want. Absolutely. All right, so which class are you playing now? Talk us through who you who you are right now. Alan9026 wants to know what gun you're using. Um, well, I'm playing as a Light Assault right now. Light Assault is... Uh, Sort of one of the. Ooh, I got a UI bug here because I used my admin account to switch back and forth between classes. So here we go. So now I'm I'm a light assault. Uh, he's sort of the the basic commando shock trooper guy. He uses a quick jump jet to be able to uh, sneak behind enemy lines, to be able to get over walls or get up to places where he won't necessarily be expected. Um, and he's a close range fighter, so I can use things like shotguns or uh, or this carbine rifle to be able to you know, get my job done. And I'm using an ACX-11, which is kind of a advanced, uh, relatively advanced. Um, you see, I'm getting all this spam There's of weapons there. that I've unlocked because I switched Just... over to TR for a split second. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's a, you know, a relatively uh, advanced carbine rifle. Uh, it, all the weapons in this game are side grades, though, so it's not like this gun is any better than any of the other guns. Does it's it just, just have slightly different balancing in terms of fire rate or range or exactly. anything? Exactly. Like that? yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. And it's not really designed to be to be better or the king of anything, but I found that this one fits my playstyle pretty well, um, and I can be pretty successful with it. So. so now, NC has pushed into this massive structure here, and capturing one of these structures is not like going and standing by the one capture point in an outpost. There's a lot There's a lot more to it. Yeah, it's kind of a staged progression to get in here. Um, actually, I'll pop open the map really quick and show you on here what's going on. So, you see we have the shield icon that's flashing here? Mm -hmm. That's a generator. Um, and there's another one over here with horizontal lines. So the shields actually have horizontal lines and vertical lines on them. You have to take out both of these generators to be able to go through the shields and get into this central area. Okay. Once you're in the central area, you can take out the spawn generator and you can start working on capturing the base. Um, but the first step is these. So the defenders right away, because um, we're coming mostly with infantry, um, mm -hmm. you could also take out these gate shields, which will allow you to get access if you want to bring vehicles in here. 
Uh, but since we're here mostly with infantry, the defenders are going to have to concentrate on making sure they hold these um, shield generators so that we can't start infiltrating into the base itself. But once we can get into the base and take out the spawn generator and then hold up here on this point, then eventually we're capturing the base. And since we're in the middle, when the base gets flipped over, now we're kind of defending as we push out of that base and out towards whatever the next, next objective is. Okay. So are you... Nice. So you're heading over towards to take down a shield, and I'm checking here. And we've got a question about flamethrowers. Apparently a Max uh, mm -hmm. was armed with flamethrowers at some point in some screenshots prior to launch. Is that something that folks can get into here? Uh, I will be bringing back flamethrowers for Max for Max's uh, in the near future. But we had to pull them out because of some issues that they were having. There you go. So uh, we, yeah, we had them in, in beta, and they're really, really fun. But they were causing some performance issues, so we need to uh, kind of revisit them and figure out how we, how we sort those out before we re-enable them. You would, you would think something firing a gigantic wall of flames that's lighting on <laughs> the scene and causing shadows to dance everywhere is going to potentially... Take, yeah, take a little bit more work Ooh. than just throwing some bullets across the, across the way. Yeah. I mean, the bullets in this game are actually relatively... Um, they're, they're pretty robust, too. They have a lot of functionality. Oh, come on. I had that guy so Ooh, close. We had the drop on him, too. I know. I'm terrible at this game. It's but, close, uh, though. Well, he had that shield, you know? Mm -hmm. That's that's what it was all about. There you go. Yeah. And as a heavy assault, then maybe his bullets pack a little bit more of a punch. Yeah, he has that gun that's actually really stable. He has a uh, he has a uh, LMG, mm -hmm. so he can actually throw a ton of bullets at me, relatively stable. And you'll see he did the smart thing. He crouched right away, and I did the dumb thing and stood still. As a light assault, what I ought to be doing is jumping around a little bit more and trying to get yeah. in closer to him. So It's all right. Yeah. Yeah, there's other lives. Eh. All right, Tristan in the chat is curious about the leveling and unlock system. Uh, so, of course, you're gaining experience through all various battlefield actions. And how does that feed into being, when you're able to gain new weapons and, and level up and such? Yeah, I can actually show you real quick. Uh, so, as I'm earning experience, I'm going to get certification points, which we can see down here. And I have a grip of them right now because I'm a cheater. But uh, they're in there, and uh, I can just go into our certifications menu here and from here I can do all kinds of stuff if I want to get some different certs for my combat medic for instance mm -hmm. I can upgrade my suit slot so that I can actually hold more uh, uh, grenades or I can upgrade nano weave armor which makes me able to take a little bit of extra damage mm -hmm. I can also unlock weapons in here any weapons in the game anything that uh, affects gameplay at all can all be unlocked through gameplay using certification points so although we are a free-to-play game and we do have microtransactions um, most of these weapons you're gonna unlock using certification points rather than using station cash um, so, if you want to. So I mean, station cash is the currency in game that you purchase with real world money. That's right. And so that would allow give you the option to grab this particular assault rifle, but none of these other guns listed are you know you can can be acquired with station cash. Uh, they can, yeah. So I mean, I can go in here and I can unlock any of these guns with station cash if I want to. My account's a little bit weird because I all I have all these weapons already since I gave myself everything. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I can look in here and see for infantry weapons, for example. Um, I'm seeing Vanu ones because I was just logged in as a as a Vanu character, but it doesn't really matter too much. So I can I can click unlock here, and if I want to, I can do it as a trial. I can actually unlock the weapon, or I can unlock it using station cash. Oh, and neat. the reason this makes sense is because again, these are just side grades. It's really a playstyle choice that you're making. You're not mm -hmm. buying a more powerful gun when you do this. Right. Um, you're just making a playstyle choice. So the things that you can buy with station cash within the game are cosmetics, things that alter your appearance. Um, like boosts, that nasty skull face you got going the on? The skull face, <laughs> right. Um, boosts, which are, you know, uh, make you earn experience or resources at a faster rate. Okay. Uh, or um, weapons, which are the playstyle choice. But since these do affect gameplay, obviously, since it's a weapon that can get unlocked, we allow you to unlock it using certification points, too. So I don't meet the requirements for this because I'm not actually on VS. Like I said, my, my uh, account's in a weird state right now because I switched back and forth from factions a couple times. And you're, you know, behind the developer wall do, doing your magical fly around camera mode yeah. earlier. Get out of here. Got him. Shot him right Pumped in the foot. Up. Oh, there's another one. Uh, what I really enjoy about these these battles here, and we actually just saw that one blow up, is these these emplaced guns that you can man on the on the walls. Yeah. And, the, you know, you have the anti-air ones, you have ones that are pointed more towards the ground to, to handle vehicles. Um, but they they are really nasty. Yeah, they can be. They can be for sure. Um, I'm trying to... Oh. Damn. 
trying to sneak up on those mag riders, and I did not do a very good job of being elusive. They spotted you. <laughs> they certainly you. Was did. that your little C4 detonator in your he hand? Won cause he won because he had the he had the uh, giraffe camo on. Mm. The giraffe camo makes you okay. It just bam. It just bamboozles you. Mm -hmm. You just don't stand a chance. You can't. You can't lose if you have the giraffe camo. That's what we're finding out. Uh oh, here comes giraffe tank. I'm gonna try to get in close here and see for him. A daring run. But he is a giraffe. <laughs> All right, Key, key Sling USA Army uh, in, on the GameStop comments is curious about optimizing. No, no, no the, get away from me. About any optimization you're doing for AMD users. Obviously, you guys have a lot of different. <sighs> Blew myself up. Technical considerations for your for the user base, of course, but uh, AMD users seem to. We've got one here who wants to know if you guys are doing any optimization targeted at them specifically. Uh, yes, we are. Um, we know that right now AMD is uh, AMD processors are are kind of uh, not performing as well as as a similar Intel processor does in the game. Um, so yeah, that's something that we're aware of and that we're trying to work on. But something about optimization that is always important to note is that it's an ongoing process. It's not an overnight thing. Um, and sometimes, some cases it can be agonizingly slow. Mm -hmm. um, how, how much work goes into getting like one tenth of 1% of an optimization in a game like this. Oof. So, uh, you know, our, we do have engineers that are working on optimization all the time and we have had them working on optimization for months, but this game is doing things that no other games in the world do. Um, it's trying to, uh, it's trying to show you hundreds of players fighting in an area. It's, uh, it's, you know, looking at it's uh, simulating bullet physics across all these characters. It's you know, it's a big game. It's doing busy. a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it, it is extremely taxing on your on your hardware. You're in the thick of it. I am about to get capped here. Oops, that's friendly. He's your buddy. Don't I know. hurt him. Terrible. Excellent game, Higby. Congrats, says the Jeffum. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, there you go. Uh, got a question coming in, wondering about, you know, how you manage server population, because we've got, you know, three factions across three continents, uh, you know, multiple servers, many, many servers, no doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, how, but, you know, we talked a little bit before about how you're, you guys are real pleased that, you know, players entering the factions are getting pretty balanced. But in terms of making, sh ha having those players go to the right servers in the right continents, how is, how is that balancing working out? Um, well, I mean, one of the things that we do to try to help guide that is when you're creating a character for the first time, we kind of will sort the list of servers based on which ones need that faction more. Mm -hmm. um, but we allow you to create, if you want to put your character on where your friends are playing, we don't want to restrict you from creating a VS character where all the VS characters are um, because of that. So there's no hard restrictions in there for it. We give, uh, we give resource and experience bonuses to lower populated empires to try to help encourage them to not bail out just because they happen to be underpopulated. Mm -hmm. um, Population is always an issue, but in a game like Planetside, it's a little bit less of a problem than in a uh, normal standard FPS game. If you're playing you know, any other FPS game and the, the teams are in balance where there's 12 people on your team and 16 people on the other, it can be almost impossible to win. Mm -hmm. uh, in Planet Side, you can have fights where 20 people are fighting against 150 people and the 20 are winning. Or, what? Uh, yeah, and it, it happens. And it's just about where you're defending at. It's about what kind of vehicles you're using. It's about how you're managing choke points. Uh, you know, it's it's very possible to have fun and have um, and win in a non-balanced population scenario in Planet Side 2. And that's a that's something that sort of helps us out. But we still do try to maintain as much of a population balance as we possibly can, despite that. He's crouching. He wants to get you with the shotgun. Not gonna happen. No, dude, there's a ton of guys over here. I forgot to do the door I wanted to. <laughs> got, a, got a bad bounce on that one. Yeah, I did. So are you, now this, are you drawing close to the central capture point here? Like, are shields down, or are you moving in? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to tell because I don't hear all the audio uh, that normally goes along with it. So we have one shield generator down over here. We mm -hmm. need to get this one down next, and then we can start pushing in. Uh, so that's my next objective, is to go grab that shield generator and try to make sure that we can not only bring it down, but also uh, keep it down. All right, we still have people curious about the... Uh Smedley's tweet earlier about a battle cruiser they're calling in now. Uh, if you guys missed that earlier in the show, Matt was very coy about it and saying, uh, sort of implying that, talking about it later, I guess. Um, 
Unless you want to talk about no. <laughs> <laughs> um, if people have tech questions, uh, we're getting some very specific sort of, you know, layouts of I have this such and such processor, I have such and such uh, system. Is it worth me buying this or that? Mm -hmm. uh, if they have questions about that, what's a good resource for them? You know, for them to get that kind of specific answer. Um, I would say probably the the, the Planet Side Two forums would be a good place to go mm -hmm. um, to talk about that kind of stuff. Our tech director and uh, a lot of other members of our code team, especially the guys that are working on uh, on optimization, like Cycles McHertz is on there. Um, he's one of our one of our code gurus who's working on optimization in the game. Um, okay, I've got this thing overcharged now. This is the tense moment while I'm charging the generator. He came oh, in. Saw that. There's a guy right in there. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, take that. Got him. <laughs> oh, that guy doesn't even see you. No. It's so awkward. Get him. I need bullets. <laughs> He's trying to repair. I keep using my quick knife instead of actually instead reloading of just my gun. Patiently reloading. Wow, you guys are having a little party back there. Oh, uh, he's, he's not sure what's going on. He's just walking around. Looks like we might be having some server weirdness here. I'm not sure. Could be. These guys might be glitched somehow, too. There definitely appears to be some strangeness happening here. Definitely. Otherwise, normally in that situation, everybody would be dead really quickly. Dudes would be getting killed, <laughs> for sure. Because there's lots of dudes in a room and they all have guns and want to kill each other. Yeah, it seems like we are having some sort of server hiccup happening right now. Yeah. Uh, this might be a good time to address the question of, are we going to see another map? Would that be a, a good thing to try to go check out or try Hop to over check to out? a different map? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, we can do that. Let's see what's going on over here on Indar. Oh, disconnected from the server. Rats. Denied. All right, so we are in the midst of a server change here real quick to show you guys the continent of Indar, which is a lot dustier, we could say, from then Esamir. Mm-hmm. Um... And uh, we are gonna. Uh, Tixie Licks has a question about the knife. So we saw you trying to use the knife a little bit there. Is mm -hmm. that a, a knife you have with you all the time? Is this user's actually asking about an equipable knife slot alongside quick knives, like uh, in Battlefield 3. Um, well, right now we don't have an equipable knife. Um, we do have the, the quick knife in there. Mm -hmm. For a while we were talking about doing an equipable knife and how that would work. Um, but I think right now we're pretty content with having it be a quick knife. Um, it seems to work fairly well. Uh, the one place that I think I would like to do an actual equipable melee is on the Infiltrator. Um, mm -hmm. He was always really fun in the original Planet side because had, they had the knives uh, that you can, you can activate them essentially. So there was like a vibro knife, there was a, uh, uh, a force blade, and then there was a, a chain blade. And the chain blade was really neat and you'd hear an Infiltrator sneak up behind you and then all of a sudden you'd hear him activate and go and you would just know like, oh, like, uh -oh. oh no. Yeah, I'm about to get stabbed right uh, in the back. In some serious trouble right now. Exactly. Uh, the Infiltrator, of course, a class that has cloaking ability and so like really tries to fly in behind enemy lines and sneak his way in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he's he's a uh, he has cloaking, but he also is the uh, the sniper type character. Mm -hmm. So he can, um, you know, he can play in a variety of different ways. If you want to sneak in and kind of do some subterfuge type stuff, like uh, hacking turrets, hacking equipment terminals, you can totally do that. Or you can play a little bit further away and use your high-powered sniper rifle to uh, get some kills. Again, this all goes back to your role and how you want to play your particular role. There's a lot of options. There available. really are a lot of options. Uh, I was playing a bunch in the beta and would have people who would just be flying the large transport ships yeah. back and forth from the, you know, the, the hub spawn area to the battle front. And so, you know, like, every few minutes, this dude's just coming back around with the big ship. Hop in, I'll drop you off. Yeah, those guys are heroes, man. They're, they uh, are, I love them. Yeah, they're, they're the unsung heroes of the game, the guys who are really helping to deliver troops to the front lines and stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool that... that that there are things that you can do within this game mm -hmm. that don't necessarily require you to be the the awesome shooter player. Um, and that was something that was important for us when we were designing the game initially, mm -hmm. is we wanted people who were um, maybe part of a MMO community already. They play EQ2 with their friends, or they play EVE Online with their friends, um, but they might not necessarily be shooter players, 
We wanted if their friends were going to come and play Planetside 2 for there to be plenty of things for them to do and feel useful if there weren't a good shot. Um, okay. Sometimes it's hard when you're trying to play a shooter and you're not a shooter player. Yeah. Um, especially a multiplayer shooter. Who wants feel to just really... play a game and get shot in the face all the time? Exactly. And a, a game like this can be really punishing. But we also have a lot of support activities. So you can play as a medic where you're following guys around and you're healing them and reviving more. Mm -hmm. And you can be a really meaningful, important part of your team by doing that job, or by being a transport pilot, or being the guy who gets the Sunderer into the exact right location and deploys it so now we have that spawn point there, or being a squad leader where you're trying to define on the map where everybody's gonna fight. Uh -huh. Those are all things that don't require you to be able to aim at all, but and are still linchpins of being able to be successful within the game. having these kind of massive conflicts play out well. Absolutely, yeah. right. Yeah, so uh, we're back in now, and I'm over on Amherst now, which is a different continent, as requested. Um, and it's I'll, got trees. I'll get my cheat on. Nice. Spawn my reaver here. That thing takes off quick. Okay, get the afterburner. Let's see, where is everybody? Alright, we're going over this way. So when you fly, Ooh. are you more of a little nimble dogfighter fan, or do you like to sort of come in heavy with someone laying down bombing run behind you? Uh, it just kind of depend. I, I don't do too much dogfighting. I'm not that good at it. Um, we have people who play our game now that are phenomenal at dogfighting, so I don't even try doing that. Uh, when I'm flying nowadays, uh, I tend to either be using rockets um, or just going from point A to point B. I find myself using infantry a lot more than um, vehicles these days. Even the ground vehicles, you know, like to, you know motor along in a big old tank and just start bombarding. Oh, I love it. I love it. But <laughs> if I were to look at my, my playtime on my character, it would probably be 25% vehicles and 75% infantry. Mm -hmm. That's just where I that's just where I find myself gravitating towards most. Sure. Try not to make people seasick. I tend to uh, make people puke when I'm flying. It can be tricky to, you know, fly for an Ooh. audience. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, you're in the driver's seat, it feels fine to you. But, to be fair, our uh, our producer bet me that I could. So, at our town hall here when we get a demo, we have an event that we do every December, which is a, a, uh, for our company, kind of showing them all the games that are coming out. Uh-huh. And you made someone cute. I did. Yikes! Were you, were you happy? Uh, I mean, mission accomplished. I wouldn't say right? that I was happy necessarily, <laughs> but it did kind of feel like, well, if if it's good enough to make somebody puke, you know, the air combat. <laughs> it's good. exciting enough, right? Nice. <laughs> that was a nice little bail out there. Worth noting that if you're going to try to attempt that, folks, have a jetpack. Yeah, you know what? And the thing that sucked about that was I was so close to taking out that liberator too. You were really close. You were on his tail for a while. Yeah, the, his main gunner switched to the tail gunner, and the tail gunner on that thing is actually relatively beefy, so. Um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to die. All right, it's Murda TV. asks, please talk about the account services being offered, transfers, etc. Hoping the ability to transfer between two accounts is one of them. Uh, to transfer a character between two accounts, I'll make sure we bring that up with our guys that are working on uh, on those tools. Um, but we're working right now on things like. Uh, character transfers to go from one server to another. Mm -hmm. um, character certification respects. Um, we'll probably be doing name changing at some point. Uh, you know, your typical services that uh, that most MMOs have uh, will definitely be supporting in the plan side as well. Nice. How about this one? When are you going to let us turn off FXAA? <laughs> I'll have to talk to the engine programmers about that. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that's on the list to let people turn that off. Although I have seen that be a request for a while. So, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll have a chat with some guys about that. There you go. They are pleased. Whoa, I went to a bee's nest there. <laughs> Surprise! Jumped over a hill, and there were a bunch of guys. And lo and behold, the Vanu was waiting. Mm hmm Question, will revised BFRs come to Planet Side 2? Uh, we do not have any plans right now to put BFRs in the game at all. Although, no, we don't have any plans to put <laughs> BFRs in the game at all. <laughs> There it is. Uh, all right. Razor Frost, you're acting about the city continent. We talked about that one earlier, so be sure to check out the stream once it's archived. 
Folks, uh, I'm checking the chat on twitch.tv slash GameSpot and also the comments on GameSpot.com. So if you have any questions, ask us there and I'll transfer them over here to creative director Matt Higby. And of course, be sure to follow us on Twitch uh, for updates on whenever we go live with gameplay, which is Whoa. really regular. Hello. Hey, it's Kevin Van Ord. Hi. Hey, Kevin. For I just want to say Vanu for life. That's, that's really all I can <laughs> Did, so you came over to start a fight. Is that that's what happened, Kevin? Now, so Kevin, you've been playing a bunch. Yeah, you've been playing your good your Vanu fights. character. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, oh yeah. The, I guess you, you have the microphones over here. I was thinking. I hope people can hear me. But yeah, I'm standing right here. There's microphones. Um, yes. Um, I'm playing a Vanu character. Uh, a heavy, as a matter of fact. Um, so yeah, I I got the shield. I got the anti-vehicle weapons, and I'm. I'm good to go. What are you liking about playing the heavy? Like, what you know? What's a satisfying heavy run for you? Well, a lot of it comes down. To, well, we were talking earlier. Um, there was this sort. There's this sort of cat and mouse thing that I was doing the other day, um, which is yeah, it's kind of kind of bad. But so you've got these she in certain locations. You've got shields that can't really be shot through, and so you've got sometimes you get these stalemates where you know the. The, the opposing faction wants to take over the base and you're defending and they can't get through but if you if you wander out you're kind of a sitting duck and so you know they would they would bring in their their some transport vehicles and, and tanks would be driving through and and so there I am with my anti-vehicle weapon and so I'm sort of like trying to peek out of the shield take a shot and come back in and it became this sort of really tense um, like standoff between dudes out there to see who could fire off their shots and who could actually make the something right timing, land. Yeah. Um, but I was, you know, the other day, for example, one one thing I like to do is get that get that shield going um, and really lay down the law when I can. Um, and uh, sometimes, like for the other day, that involved. Need my mouse sensitivity um, changed here. Yep. Okay. Taking the long shots. Oh, looks With like the scared them off. Yeah. <laughs> the worst long-range weapon available. <laughs> but uh, yeah, another great thing that happened the other day is is like, uh, you know, me getting out there with a bunch of my teammates and and uh, on an, on an, like a, an aircraft platform, and the enemy was jump packing up, like they had a bunch of dudes that was just continually coming up to harass us, mm -hmm. and it, it gets to feeling pretty good when they're they're getting up there and they're trying to take cover and they're trying to force us out of our safe spots. Um, so that more of their buddies can come up and take us out and continue to harass us. And so it's good to get out there as a heavy, activate the shield, and just sort of mow a bunch of them down before running back to a spot where I can sort of take a breather um, and, and do it again. That sounds like a good time. Sounds pretty fun to me. Uh, <laughs> all right. Kevin, I'm going to cut you off there and dive back into the questions sure. here. C4 Hopper wants to know, Higby, what is your favorite medic gun? Um, I would probably say... The old de facto Gauss rifle um, for the NC. Although, man, the the TR guns, especially the Cycler, um, are pretty nasty. Now that's something that uh, folks in the comments have touched on, but we haven't really here. Is that you know, from faction to faction, there are differences. You do have different weapons, and you know, I I sort of assume it's you know, your goal is the is the side grade kind of thing. You give all the factions like, g you know, generally balanced type of uh, array of weapons, but at the same time, you eternally have people asking, like, are you going to buff new conglomerate? Vanu's OP, you know, like, you have those battles going on. So how does it, how does it, how do you guys find a, a comfortable place in that argument? Um, well, you know, uh, we actually look at data. We data? Have, we have this crazy Facts. thing called data. Oh, man. Uh, so, I mean, there's, there's definitely some, um, we take opinion into account, too, uh, how things feel. But sure. for the most part, we can look at data and we can tell if things are relatively balanced or not. And uh, I don't think that there's a lot of imbalance that's really happening with uh, empire versus empire or classes versus classes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's little hitching points here and there with like a specific uh, class or a specific weapon on a specific faction. But uh, there's not there's not too much wide scale imbalance that's really going on in the game right now, which is great. Yeah, and also that sunset is pretty great. Yeah, it's not so bad, it's huh? It's looking really pretty. Yeah. Uh, folks are wondering if you could hop into a vehicle at uh, your earliest convenience. Sure. And 
When you're rolling with Matt Higby, his earliest convenience is now. right now. Yeah. <laughs> so can you hook me up with that command a little bit later? That's pretty good. That's a pretty good one, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a good command. All right. Uh, now I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Oh, I ran over my buddy. See, this is the problem when you get in one of these vehicles is you got to be too careful. Um, that's not my style, man. I'm more of a... Just want to charge in there? Yeah, I'm, I'm dumb when I play, man. I don't think. I just go. The best part is when you're standing on a vehicle spawn platform by accident, mm -hmm. and somebody spawns in a vehicle, and you're, you go from standing there alive to dead, and you realize, I've learned an important lesson from this, which is don't stand in that spot. Yeah, that can be a little bit frustrating for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and and honestly, there are there are some people that just don't seem to be noticing what's happening around them, um, and will just run over you. Oh, going for the long shot. I know. Uh, I won. We have people curious about not just new infantry weapons, but also you're wondering if there's plans for more utility tools like different jetpacks and stealth and shield types. Uh, that's is that something you guys are thinking about or working on? Uh -oh. oh, damn it. Sorry, I was I was really... See, this is why I was saying I get too distracted when I try to talk and play at the same time. Oh, yeah, that's that's natural. That is the permanent condition of any uh, GameSpot live streamer. <laughs> but, yeah, this guy is really wanting to take you out. with, And you got the, some rockets coming down from up top there. Yeah, no, I'm getting shot to hell over here. Am I allowed to say hell? Sure. Great. Count it. Yeah, you are you are one rocket away from that thing exploding. Yeah. Uh, time to make a, a judicious exit. Retreat. Yes. Or in your case, on foot assault. Oh no, this is not good. Oh, he saw oh, you. He did indeed. <laughs> <laughs> it looks for a second there like he might be looking on the horizon. Yeah. Might miss you. Nope. Nope. No such luck. <laughs> not the case. Not the case at all. Question that I actually am not even sure what this means. Will they ever announce a winner for the hashtag Never Have I Ever Week Three contest? The one Planet Side Two hosted. I don't um, know. That's a question for Ty, not me. I'm looking across the room and getting heavy size, so uh, I don't think there's an answer forthcoming for that one. <laughs> <laughs> there, there will be answer seeking happening. We don't have the person in charge who is in charge of that uh, in the room. So, as Error Zorch. That resort. They're on. Oh, dude. Come on. Tank here. Oh, Matt. Why did I find a tank? That sucks. Oh, you're one to complain, Mr. Hey, I'm going to spawn a tank out of nowhere. Yeah, but they're not allowed to do that, you know? <laughs> Just my luck. Run into a tank. At least I survived. At least I survived. At least you managed to... Survive another day, although so we can I, see here that it's kind of it's be, being nighttime all of a sudden. Yeah, right? that sunset is leading to nighttime as they tend to do. <laughs> they do indeed. And so all your continents have day-night cycles, and I mean, when you're dealing with, you know, alien dudes in suits that look kind of, you know, it gets darker, it gets harder to see them. Like, yeah, is that, is that you know sort of hard to adjust nighttime-wise? Like, you know, you're a kind of a blue dude. It's looking kind of blue in the environment right now. I mean, it's stuff you guys take into consideration. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's why we have things like night vision and flashlights and all kinds of stuff like that. Most people don't actually want to use flashlights at nighttime because it gives away their position. Yeah, it just makes it a lot easier to aim at you. Right, yeah. But, uh, yeah, having, having things like uh, night vision really does change. I mean, having a day-night cycle really does change the gameplay. So when it is nighttime... You know, you need to go bust out your night vision. You need to kind of switch up your attachments a little bit. Maybe you want to change your armor around so that you have a, a, a different look at night that blends into the night a little bit better. Uh, all that stuff is all factored in. And when we build something like a day-night cycle, the whole purpose is to try to make the battlefield a little bit more dynamic. You might be fighting at this base in the morning, mm -hmm. but by the time you're actually done fighting there, it might be uh, it might be the nighttime already. And that's, uh, that's something that doesn't happen in a lot of other games. Whoa. Question. Missed every shot. How can anyone justify purchasing and upgrading anti-air if it's only meant to deter aircraft? <laughs> Clearly, Aunt Lou 42 has never been uh, trying to defend a base that is being circled and bombarded from the air uh, <laughs> by a bunch of... So what I am blanking on the names, but... Uh, it, it, like, air is... Vehicles are super effective, not just at shooting down other air vehicles, but also controlling areas, denying 
people entry to areas and really making it hard to survive. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think more specifically what they're, what they're asking is, uh, we've been talking about anti-air a little bit, and I made a post uh, the other day on Reddit where, where someone was asking about it, basically saying that what we want to do with, with uh, ground-based anti-air is not necessarily make it be a hard counter to all aircraft where, uh-oh, there's a flak turret down there, therefore there's a no-fly zone up, up above. Okay. Um, we want ground-based anti-air to be effective, mm -hmm. but not necessarily just be a straight-up hard counter uh, to it. So what I had said was that we want that ground-based anti-air to be a strong deterrence to air and extremely dangerous to pilots that are doing risky stuff like hovering and firing rockets or flying right up above the base and just shooting down as a liberator but not moving very much. Right. Um, we want ground-based anti-air to be extremely uh, dangerous to those type of people. Mm -hmm. But we don't want it to necessarily be something where if you have an anti-air weapon, any aircraft within 100 miles is completely dead and, and screwed. Um, and course. really what we want to have is more aircraft provide anti-air. So if there's a lot oh, of liberators okay. around, the best counter for taking out those liberators and being able to be really effective against them should be the your friendly uh, air force going mm -hmm. in and being able to take them out. So air control and uh, and all that kind of stuff is is really really important. Um, but we still want you to not feel like you have a weapon that's useless against aircraft. So um, when I was talking about that, I wasn't trying to say that we should make uh, anti-air any weaker or anything like that at all. Okay. It was more of we don't want anti-air to become the alpha and the omega of basically being able to completely shut down the air game entirely. Now you mentioned Reddit. Is that another site that you guys are pretty active on in terms of engaging with the community? Uh, I think so, yeah. I go to Reddit every day. Um, I go, I mean, I'm on Reddit probably 12 hours a day every day. Uh, but yeah, we have a so Planetside yes. subreddit. <laughs> um, we have Planetside Universe. This is one of our big forums. We're on Twitter all the time too. I mean. Games like this, all of our games basically, are all about community. Mm -hmm. It's all about team play and community. So we've we've had, uh, since the very beginning, since the very inception, actually, I did an AMA on the Planetside Reddit when there was 100 people on the Planetside Reddit the day after we announced the game. I went on there and I wanted to just talk to the guys who were there. Cool. Um, because we care a lot about the community. We care a lot about their feedback. Um, we absolutely want to hear ideas from them and be able to respond to ideas from them. So yeah, uh, Reddit is something that we... We do a lot. Just one of the many ways you can get in touch with the folks at SOE about Planet Side 2. Uh, and of course, live streams like this are. And we're in the comments on Twitch and on GameSpot, so check us out there. We are coming pretty close to the end of our live stream. We probably got about 10 more minutes here. Uh, maybe we can convince Matt to get back into an air vehicle to fly around a little bit more. We had a, a brief little uh, flash with almost shooting down an enemy vehicle earlier. Do you want me to uh, do some more fail flights? We'll take take us on another fail flight, and then uh, we'll we'll do some. We'll see some more on foot action before we conclude. All right. But we also have uh, some questions coming in from Gamespot. Uh, some tech questions about support for DirectX 11 and support for PhysX. Uh, well, PhysX we had uh, turned on in the beta, um, and it was on at launch. But there was an issue with some drivers that got released. Um, causing problems with physics mm -hmm. uh, across lots of games, not just our game. Uh, I think those issues have been resolved, so we can probably re-enable it, but I'm not entirely sure. I saw that they had been resolved on a blog that I was reading yesterday. Uh, I haven't talked to anybody internally because I've been up here. Sure. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what the status is on that, but we definitely want to get that turned back on. We have really cool physics effects uh, within the game, and we've been working really closely with NVIDIA. Um, all of our vehicle physics all work through physics. Uh, so what they're asking for is things like we had particle effects so that if you shot like this These little sparks would actually bounce off the ground and bounce off of all the stuff that they hit. Oh cool Yeah, kind of create that's, some cool little eye candy. That's nice. Yeah uh, So yeah, I mean we want to get that turned on as quick as possible and the game should work under DirectX 11 just fine um, I haven't heard anything specifically with people saying that it, it wasn't so um, I don't know maybe if, if they could tell me more about what they were well the two were questions were uh, Will you offer DX game 11 gameplay in the future, or yeah, any 64-bit slash DX11 client for the future? So, um, huh. DirectX 11 client. We don't have plans right now on trying to do a, a DX11 client specifically that I know of, at least. Uh, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sure. Can, I'm not the tech guy. Well, can you confirm or deny this uh, assertion by Shade Strike? Animal life is against Araxian lore. Animal life is against Araxian lore. Because <laughs> uh, I don't see a lot of critters running around these uh, these these areas here. Yeah, we have a lot of flora, but not so much fauna. Um, there's some butterflies. You know, I've seen butterflies <laughs> flying around. Uh, 
And there's people, which are technically animals, I think. So, yeah. They're in that, that uh, sure. what Maybe do you call not. that, genus? Genus? I, I forget my, my high school. Kingdom, phylum. Kingdom, right, yeah. <laughs> See, you remember. Okay, I crashed my plane. Thank you, Ty. You could, you could always I'm remember again. because the mnemonic oh, is God. King Philip chased one foxy Girl Scout. There you go. That's something it's impossible yeah. to forget in your brain. <laughs> Absolutely. It's one of those things that you've known since you were like 10, and then it just retains with you forever. Like, there used to be one for the planets, but now it doesn't do me any good anymore because Pluto's gone. Oh, it messes you up, huh? Like, it's out of the solar oh. system, right? They just removed Pluto completely. Yes, it's gone. It no longer exists. Yes, I knew it. Higby, are you planning on a South American server, asks Nokia6061. Uh, no announcements on that yet, but we are really excited by seeing the uptake of the game in South America, for sure. Cool. I spawned as far away <laughs> as humanly possible from the base I was actually fighting at. I agree, by the way, with uh, GameSpot user uh, Dragonite493, Chris, that maybe you should consider doing a gun show for Planetside for Planet 2. Side too? Maybe if we publicly publicly ask Chris to do this, he, he might be um, inclined. I think I might have a little time coming in December. We'll see. Uh, Dragonite, definitely take that under uh, consideration. Thanks maybe, for You've got to get the asking. Nanite Ned gun show going. Maybe that means that SOE can then provide some, uh, some extra certs for you to unlock all those cool weapons. But I'll just leave it there. I'll let you all discuss it. Thank you, Van Nanite Nord. Nuns, Nanite Ned's gun emporium. Nanite Ned, is that your alter ego? <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. That's Much too them. my Whoa, chagrin. That was a great shot. That dude just picked me off with his with his tin cannon from the ground. Well, and with that great shot of you getting totally destroyed mid-air, uh, Matt Higby, I think we're going to bring this Planetside 2 stream to a close. Uh, we'll linger in the comments here and answer a few more questions for you folks. But... Uh, we're going to bring the video to a close. I want to thank you, Matt, for coming by and showing us off some Planetside 2. You bet. Now available, now free to play. Mm -hmm. yep. So you folks can totally download this and get in on it. Planetside2.com, uh, go! Boom. <laughs> there you have it. Matt, thank you so much. You bet, man. Thank you, folks, for joining us, and we'll see you next time.